Good morning everybody, I'm currently on a train in between London and Belgium, uh, right now that's France there behind you, I'm going to shortly be in Lille, so I attended the IIBN conference yesterday in London, it was the 8th one and I thought I would just share the key points that I picked up from it on the day. So uh, we had Paul Dressler who is president of CBI and particularly he said over and over and over again just how much business can be a force for good and he was saying that particularly in the context of the Brexit conversation. He spoke about the impact economically of what Brexit would mean for the UK, but in particular was a lot more vocal about the challenges that Brexit posed from a cultural and a social point of view. He said that the UK economy would heal, but that the divisions on from that point of view of socially and politically would take a lot longer. An interesting statistic is that he said of the 400,000 foreign students in the UK, for, uh, sorry, 25% of them were Chinese. So I just thought that that was an interesting point as he was looking at the future global superpowers in the world. Uh, the next person that we had was Paul Costello the designer. Uh, he made a variety of points. Um, he particularly pointed out the trend that women are now looking particularly for more for comfort in their footwear. I had to smile at that given the fact that I have been in a boot and runners uh, for the almost the past year with this broken foot So, but I've taken it to the extreme I suppose. Um, but in addition he's pointed out the fact that retail like in-person retail is changing so much that today people want an experience. They want hair salons, they want restaurants and so on and I have to absolutely concur with that because based on the future of retail that I did, uh, I emceed an event for Dublin City Council much earlier on in the year and I recorded a video afterwards and absolutely concur with that. Uh, the next person we had was Bonnie Greer. She was interviewed by Joan Lynham. Um, many of you may have seen her intervention on Question Time a couple of weeks ago about the way in which Ireland was being treated in the Brexit discussion and particularly in the context of the UK and the US trading relationship and how uh, there are many Irish people who are in Congress and therefore that relationship would need to be considered. She made a variety of points, um, very very interesting woman and expertly interviewed I have to say by Jo Lynham. Um, particularly she said she did, she made the analogy that Brexit is like being with a partner for decades and then one day they walk into the house and you don't recognise them anymore. She says that is the way in which she feels about what it's like to live in the UK at the moment. Um, she said that austerity broke a lot of people and that she said that the particularly populist um, parties who have been elected by people right around the world have been addressing unaddressed rage and anger. Um, she spoke a lot about race and about gender um, and she had she advised people not to get stuck in a box. She says, uh, don't be labelled, don't let yourself be labelled and to be individual and to be the best who you are without necessarily being drawn towards labels. And particularly a quote that she said was, she says, um, there is no such thing as race. It's scientific nonsense and it's destroying us. Um, a woman with, I have to say, I really was interested to listen to her because she thinks so measuredly about every single answer. Very, very interesting to listen to. Um, she also was struck by the fact that the Abbey Theatre in Ireland actually predates the Irish state and she just made the point that uh, Ireland had actually defined itself culturally before it had politically and uh, definitely she's an Irish fan, that's that's for sure. Um, there was a variety of pitches now I will say, three minute pitches, I will say I thought they were the best yet. Um, I've been to seven of the IIBN conferences. My first one was in London in 2012. And I have to say that I really thought that this group of pitchers had the call to action right. Um, they addressed the the issue that they were that they were solving. Many of them solve a problem or that they ameliorate, ameliorate uh, a situation. So I have to give them credit for that. Now, for me, um, the star of the show, I have to say, was Professor Louise Richardson, a political scientist of the past. Um, she was the first woman in her position, which is the Vice Chancellor of Oxford University in 600 years. She previously held a position in St Andrews, uh, first woman there in her position in 900 years. So she drew a big chuckle from the audience when she said she has her eyes firmly set in the Vatican. So a lot of us appreciate that. Um, so she spoke a lot about the challenges that universities face. Um, she spoke about contrasting regulation as well, for example. Um, that there is regulation for free speech, but there is regulation against extremist speech. So she was just making the point about um, about how that there can be conflicting uh, conflicting um, directives, I suppose. And neither of those two are easy to navigate. But she made that point. She also spoke about naturally, as you'd expect, the importance of education, and she characterized the last 10 years globally in this way she said that the crash 
decimated blue collar low skill jobs but that the recovery brought high skilled professional jobs and the whole theme of yesterday was nav navigating turbulence and she said like turbulence isn't going to go away now I have to say Paul from CBI mentioned the point he said you know navigating turbulence is just what we do as business people he said you know it's it's not today's issue or yesterday's issue or tomorrow's issue it's just an issue that business people have to face but Louise made the point um, she said well you know today and tomorrow like the immediate turbulence is, is, is Brexit but she said the medium term issue is AI is artificial intelligence and then she you know that was where the point came about the, the low skilled blue collar jobs um, she also made the point that while global economic development and societal development goes on and innovation you know the phrase you know the world has never changed so fast and yet it, it will never be as slow again is that she said it is so important to pay attention to those who don't benefit from our success and I think uh, recent developments would have certainly pointed that out. Then we have Peter Sheridan and um, Peter Sheridan from Cooperation Ireland he uh, spoke about the what their organisation does which is bring people together between Britain and Ireland uh, between North and South in Ireland and between the communities within Northern Ireland he said the five key things that um, that they were discussing five days after Brexit was the importance of protecting the peace process, um, the common travel area, preventing economic isolation in Northern Ireland, uh, preventing physical infrastructure at the border and being cognizant that tensions may arise again. And he spoke about the ongoing work that they need to make. Um, in particular as well, he pointed that again several, several, several times. He said, he said, peace needs a good economy, but a good economy needs peace. Um, then after that, we had Paula Fitzsimons from Back for Business and that is an initiative uh, facilitating Irish returning entrepreneurs so people who are returning to Ireland and she pointed out that the key thing that they need in order to or the key barrier I suppose to business success for them is that is not having a network and having to build that back, back up again so they all have membership uh, people who are part of that program all have membership of IIBN which is the Irish International Business Network um, and naturally as you can imagine like building a network is important and it's key and it takes time so um, IIBN certainly is a place and the people within it including myself were very encouraging of that and also um, you know very happy to help those people along to try to build their network uh, with them then Lucinda Grayton I have to say I like listening to Lucinda Grayton because of her experience sorry we're just arriving in here now just arriving in here shortly so um, uh, in, in particular the, she made the point that um, the European Parliament has changed completely from having two main key parties to where now you actually have a division of parties so agreement is going to be more difficult um, she projected that we may not necessarily have a clear result from the British election in a couple sorry the UK election in a couple of weeks time so instead that there, there could be an issue there and therefore we could be looking at an uncertain outcome and she also then elaborated to talk about what that would mean for Brexit then thereafter. She also spoke about the fact that Stormont hasn't hasn't actually sat for a long time and that this is going to present an issue for uh, for them. And then finally, um, Niall McGarry spoke from Joe.e, I have to say. He was exceptionally interesting, very, very interesting guy. Spoke about setting up Joe.ie for men and her.ie for women. And now they both have 3.3 million unique visitors each. Joe.ie is not gender specific either. He, he then said that he, he doesn't see the future of media being in in um, specifically websites. He doesn't see it necessarily being in on TV. What he sees is where companies like his own produce really good content and then that gets disseminated out among uh, different people and diff sorry, among different social media platforms. That's where he said the future would be. So as they're scrolling through the Twitter feed, for example, then they would be picking up a video that has been produced. He also said that concentration spans are not decreasing. It's just that we choose to spend more time focusing on media depending on how much time we have. So he said, if I'm sitting in a traffic jam for 45 minutes, it's ideal. Or a drive, of course. I was driving a lot last week uh, when I was in Southern California, for example. A lot. Uh, and therefore listening to podcasts where they could be an hour long was perfect. Whereas if you're, you know, waiting in a queue um, or waiting for a bus and it's only take, you've only got a couple of minutes, a minute long video is all that, that you're going to watch. Um, he also pointed out a very interesting um, statistic, which is that Cristiano Ronaldo actually makes more money from his Instagram than he does from football. So there is a roundup of all of the thought leadership shared yesterday. Brilliant day, had by all. And now that my train is just pulling into the station, it's time to go. Thank you. Bye.